vintage and antique sewing machines are getting very popular in the sewing community because like the ones behind me here most of them are made from all metal and they seem to, to last longer and be more robust. But if you're new to vintage sewing machines what exactly should you be looking for so that you know that you've got a decent model and when should you walk away? I'm Ollie, this is Simply Stitchy and my latest acquisition could just help me answer that question for you. Come on, let's find out what it is. The thing with vintage and antique sewing machines is they can come in a varying level of conditions from I've definitely seen better days to workable but well loved. Depending on your skill base and how good you are at fixing things up yourself, you'll probably be more likely to want to go for a machine that somebody else has got back into working condition, like Grandma here or Roger Wilco behind me. You will find that you'll pay more for a working vintage machine, but it does take the, the panic, if you like, out of having to fix something up that hasn't necessarily had the best life so far. This is a sewing machine cabinet and this damage to the top has been caused by weather. It had actually been left outside in the rain and the sun and you can see how the veneer that's on the top of the cabinet has deteriorated. You'll also notice that the cabinet has got some cosmetic damage to the legs. If we open the lid and take a look at the inside, sorry Grandma, I'm going to lean that on you for a moment. The inside has also seen a fair bit of water damage and you can see how the, the veneer or the laminate coating has deteriorated badly on both sides. Also in a sorry state of repair is this part. It, when you lift this bit up it actually takes some of the veneer with it. Sewing cabinets like this had two roles in life. The first one was to look like a piece of furniture so that the sewing machine would fit in with the room's decor and not look out of place and the second was to protect the machine that lived inside it. If we open the cabinet up carefully and take the machine out you'll see that as far as protecting goes this cabinet has done its job. This is a Singer 66 with uh, what looked to me to be filigree decals and the decals on both the front of the machine and on the back of the machine are actually in really good condition. This particular 66 is from 1926. It has the electric style hand wheel and it has the belt driven motor on the back. And although it is a little rusty in places like the tension discs are rusty and the bobbin winder over here has got signs of rust on it as well, it's actually not in bad condition. Now there is some resistance uh, when I try and turn the hand wheel so I'm not going to turn the hand wheel. You should never force these old machines if it doesn't want to work freely don't try and work it make sure you get some oil on it first to see if you can loosen the parts up and I can see that there's quite a bit of debris in those feed dogs as well so this machine is going to need a fair bit of cleaning but it has at some point in the past been used because there's still thread not just on the bobbin but actually wrapped around that bobbin release just there. Now if we take a look underneath, just hold on to it for a moment, it's a little bit mucky but considering that this has been left outside for quite some considerable time it's actually not looking that bad. There's a little bit of work that needs doing on the um, Press a foot because that's not going all the way down. That's 
good. I was worried about that. Renovating old machines like this one isn't for the faint-hearted. And before you take on a project of this size, just consider, is it going to be cheaper taking something like this and doing it up? Or is it going to be a better value for money to get one that's already working? To put it in perspective, Grandma here, when I first bought Grandma, who has herself had a bit of a busy life. She, she has some scars that show that someone actually did a lot of work with her in the past. Her decals um, are rubbed off. She's got parts where the, the varnish, the shellac has come off. She cost me 80 because she was in working condition. This one, even though it's it looks nicer cosmetically, as far as the decals are concerned, cost me a dollar. The thing is, although you might think that you're getting a bargain by going for a machine that's in a bad state of repair because it's cheap, like only cost you a quid or something like that, you have to ask yourself, how much is it going to cost you to put it right and to get it up and running so that you can actually sew with it? Or even if you just want it as um, a decoration piece in your living room, how much is it going to cost you to get it into a condition that you would be happy showing it off? And when you are pricing up how much it's going to cost, you have to take into consideration things like the cabinet that it's sitting in, as well as the actual machine. If the work that needs doing on the machine isn't something that you can do yourself, electrics for instance, if you're not an electrician, if you don't know that much about electricity or you're not confident enough, you're going to need somebody else to look at the electrics, which can turn out to be a little pricey. Mechanics are the other thing. If you're not comfortable taking things apart and putting them back together without leaving a few pits out, then you're going to need somebody that's going to be able to sort that out for you. And that doesn't just involve new parts, that involves labour costs as well, which will put the price of renovating a machine like this up even further. Now, I'm not saying for one minute that you shouldn't give it a go. Renovating an old lady like this one is a great way of finding out what makes cast iron sewing machines tick. And actually, it's a good way of finding out what makes sewing machines in general work, how they make the stitch and that kind of thing. But it is a learning curve. And there are videos on YouTube that will help you learn how Yuck. How to get covered in dust. As far as the table's concerned, I'm not entirely sure that this lid um, or any of the top of the table is actually salvageable. The legs themselves are actually okay. Um, the, the table is quite sturdy. So what I might do is I might just put a new top on it with an insert for the sewing machine. But I'm going to leave the table until later and focus on the machine first. Before I do anything else, I need to find out if this machine will actually unseize because obviously there's no point doing anything with it. If it's not going to move, it's never going to work. So that's the first port of call, getting some oil on this baby so that I can see if the parts are actually going to work. This is a really soft cloth at the moment. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some of that surface dust off the top of the machine so that when I oil it the dust doesn't get pushed into the inner workings.
already showing that actually there is potential for this machine. It is starting to move a lot freer and I'm going to leave it to soak overnight and come back to it tomorrow to see if that oil's worked into it enough for me to be able to assess whether it's going to be possible to get this one back up and running. If you want to see how I get on, subscribe, click the little bell and why not check out some of the other videos that I've got on this channel using the links coming up on the screen any minute now or the ones I'll put in the description box for you. And whichever video you go and check out next, hope to see you back here for the next one. Even if it's only to find out if this little beauty is going to make it or not. In the meantime, whatever you're sewing, whatever you're sewing it with, embrace your creativity and have fun. Thank you ever so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.